My name is Sebastian Sanchez, and I'll be reading La Pinche Línea. It was in the 1950s that both my grandfather settled in Tijuana. It was true then that the tradition of working or gaining an education in the United States while also living or keeping the roots in Tijuana started. I am the third generation of this tradition, and while I am an American born in Chula Vista, I more consider myself a child of La Pinche Línea. <laughs> I had woken up at 6 a.m. to a normal school day in Tijuana, and I took no time in getting out the door. My hair was still messy, I was still hungry, and my breath still didn't smell good. This was the consequence of getting ready in 10 minutes. Once in the car, my mother and I tuned into Radio Latina 104.5, which gives you an update on the border every 15 minutes. Suele, turn the volume up, said my mom. Hay 200 carros lado izquierdo, 400 carros ready lane, y 2,000 personas en el cruce peatonal. 200 cars on the left side, 400 cars on the right, and 2,000 people. Chingado, I said. <laughs> I usually do not swear in front of my mother, but when it comes to the fucking border, we actually both do. We finally arrived after a 15-minute drive, and the 2,000 people were very much present. The radio was not lying. Ya me voy, ma. Goodbye, mom, I said. Ten cuidado, eh? My mother told me to be careful, because instead of concentrating on making the border faster so people wouldn't have to cut, cops started to arrest anyone who tried. You could, of course, avoid going to jail by giving a bribe, or la mordida, but I live in Tijuana and went, to an uh, and went to an American public school for a reason. I was poor. No mordida money for me. I was only at the halfway point and I had already gone past a taco stand, a gordita stand, a little candy shop, a tortas food truck, and the Mexican version of a Starbucks. A de volada. The halfway point is one of two places the cops usually patrol, but this is also a common area where you can freely stand. I was trying to figure out if there was a cop up ahead, so in the middle of the border, I started casually peeking forward as far as my eye could see. There was a guy next to me, about my same age, and he started to laugh. There is no cop, he said. No? Nah, he just left, but I'm waiting for a friend. We're gonna cut too. I started walking away. I had no time to waste. After 10 minutes of searching, I did find a friend. Well, he was more of an acquaintance, but since I wanted to cut in front of him, at this point he was my best friend. <laughs> hey, que onda? What's up, I said. I didn't remember his name, but he also didn't remember mine. We tried to make Normal's border small talk. Where are you going? At what time did you wake up? How long have you been here? He had woken up at 4.30, he had been there for two hours, and he was already late for work. Our small talk ended in, in about five minutes. Like I said, I didn't know him. I started listening to my iPod, and he did the same. I felt like an asshole for using him like that, but at least I was going to be an asshole that wasn't going to be late. Or so I thought. I was finally in front of the immigration officer and just a few steps away from crossing. A donde vas? Where are you going? said the immigration officer. Wow, I gave him my American passport. To school, I responded to him in English, assuring him I too could speak the language. ¿Qué estás haciendo en México? What were you doing in Mexico? He said again in Spanish. Just visiting, I responded. The officer was a Filipino bean diesel lookalike. His dragged eyes, along with his brown skin color, and his muscle-defined cheekbones had the ability to appear as the face of a heroic guy, but he was far from that. Do you have any drugs with you? He said while looking, in, while looking at me obsessively in the eyes. 
No, I don't. I responded while I made my stare with his. You can always tell when a routine border questionnaire turns serious, and it is usually with that question. Okay, put your hands on the table and empty your pockets. I did what he told me immediately, without a response, for sometimes my thick accent gets confused with the voice of a criminal. He left his station and walked around to meet me. I did what he told me, but he still spread my legs violently. What bothered me about this was, not only could I have spread my own legs, thank you, <laughs> but he had also spread my legs so effortlessly, as if his muscles and training were created with that single purpose. Where were you in Mexico? He said as he was checking my pockets. Just visiting, I said calmly. For the worst you could do with an immigration officer is to get mad. They're just looking for an excuse. Plus, this wasn't the first time this had happened to me. Do you have any fireworks with you? But that question was the first. The question was so ridiculous that I gave up an almost quiet laugh. Well, do you? Why are you laughing? I shouldn't have laughed. My awkward chuckle was seen as suspicious behavior and that's the only thing he needed. Okay, you're coming with me. He grabbed my hands and put them against my back. Again, he did this effortlessly. He took me to a wide illuminated room where the drapes were closed. Take off your belt, empty your pockets, take off your shoes, spread your legs, and put your hands on the counter. I did what he told me. What were you doing in Mexico? I just went and, and visited. I was now nervous, for even if I wanted to remain calm, it was becoming harder to do so since he was now checking the inappropriate sections of my body. Wait here. He left, and I started to panic. He was running out of places to look from. He already touched my penis and my balls. What else could he check? He came back with purple latex gloves. I opened my eyes wide and I started screaming in my head, holy fucking shit. At that moment when I heard the final snap of the glove hitting his skin, I was sure I was going to lose the virginity that I never wanted to lose. <laughs> Take off your jeans, come on. I wanted to scream, to run away, to yell, I am an American. But it's hard to feel patriotic when a finger may go up your ass. Or maybe that is the perfect time to feel patriotic. <laughs> I took up my jeans and I, stood with, and I stood there with my legs apart as he felt my balls again and my dick again and everything felt normal for I have a very normal feeling dick and balls. There was nowhere else to go but my ass and the inside of it. He worked his way up my legs and pinched my boxers with his fingers as if, as if he was about to push them down, but he suddenly stopped. Maybe he was mentally preparing for the big moment, or maybe he was contemplating the gravity of what he was about to do, but in this pause, I closed my eyes. I tried to imagine my happy place. But the only thing I could imagine was my limping walk, my walk of shame. <laughs> you can go, pick up your stuff, come on, hurry up. He didn't go all the way, no finger went up my ass. And I was the most relieved I have ever been in my life. I put on my clothes and as soon as that bell buckled, I knew I was finally safe. I stood there fully clothed, watching him, hating him, for I felt violated and he knew this. I saw a slight crackle of regret in his eyes as he looked away from my stare. What are you waiting for? Come on, get out of here. I finally left, but I left as a different man, a man that while being a virgin to girls, had now been touched all over by a purple latex wearing gloves man. I wanted to sue the whole department. I, I wanted to never cross again, but I was poor. 
I couldn't afford to live in the United States or a lawyer. I imagine my situation as David and Goliath, but even if David beats Goliath, unfortunately then, I was no David. I was just a 17-year-old Mexican who was suspected of carrying drugs or fireworks in his butt. When, when I finally arrived to my class, all my classmates immediately looked at me. Maybe they were surprised that someone might have the balls to enter a class a whole two hours late. My white history teacher was annoyed by this, so he asked me, Why were you late, Hiram? I thought of telling him the truth, but he wouldn't understand, so I lied. I woke up late. Sorry, it's not going to happen again. I had woken up at 6 in the morning, and I arrived to school at 9.30, late and molested. So for this pinche linea, you can go fuck yourself. That is Sebastian here, Sanchez.